the rule of three seconds or five seconds. Do you know what that means? No? Okay. So there you go. I have, I've opened my camera. I put it on the uh, video mode. It's in 16. Is it in 16? It's in 16. It's all nicely. It's all, everything's clean, etc., etc. I'm going to start filming. I press the button. I count silently. One, two, three. And then if I want to move, I start moving. Okay. Now, why do I say, I'm actually filming. Why do I say five seconds? Because when you are on the go, you never go one, two, three. You go one, two, three. So you go one, two, three, four, five. Right? At least you have a few more seconds there. Um, when you stop filming, so you are filming, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I ask you a question. Okay, I'm not filming. Um, and then I'm going to stop filming. Same thing, three seconds. One, two, three, and then I stop. Why is that? Because then you don't cut off something. You have a dark, like you have more space in the front of the film decide where it starts. It, yes, and and also that's that's a very good point. But also another um, issue, uh, another important point that you mentioned, you have a, a, a start of your film. This few seconds will allow you to edit much more easily. Um, if you watch films, you're going to see that when there's movement, you never enter, a, a, a shot never enter as it's moving. It always enters, you always enter into a shot on an editing um, film with stasis, with, um, 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 how do you call it? How do you say? A still. A still, thank you. You always enter with a still and then it moves because it, it, it just gives you a strange feeling that you're entering on movement. It doesn't, it doesn't work for editing. The same thing for exiting a short, okay? Now, if you are filming a Teddy um, still um, interview, for example, then you don't have to worry too much about it. But you have, it the, the three seconds or the five seconds are still important before you start asking questions, before anything. I right? give yourself a few seconds before whatever action that you're trying to get is happening. Now, sometimes you are, you are, you know, walking about and something happens and you go, oh my God, I don't really need to catch that. And you can get it get, and you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't do that. So train in a way that it, it, it becomes um, second nature, right? Um, Hold the phone, at, the phone as a camera, here, here, right? Don't hold the phone like that or like that, unless you want to tilt. If a tilt is what you want to do, then you tilt slowly. You stop, one, two, three, before you tilt back, okay? That's your tilt or a pen, a panoramic. Open your legs, make your body into a tripod, be steady, and it's possible. It will move a little bit, and then one, two, three, okay? If, if you want to film something that's lower than you, unless you want to give an impression that's actually low down there, come down, okay? Come, come down to the ground and film it. Um, it's... It's 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 it takes work to film. Right? You just you don't do just that. You don't stay still and do that. Move steadily. Why move steadily? Move your camera steadily. If I'm moving, so I'm I'm filming you guys, and then I'm coming to Dick, and again I'm going to ask Dick a question. Blah, blah, blah. And then now I want to go to the window and show where we are. 
Now, am I going to use all of this movement in the final cut? I don't know. I might cut from dip to the window. But I want the choice of having the smoothness of, of movement in case I want to have more time for whatever, for a voiceover, for anything. Um, how do people usually film? <laughs> right? And what are you doing here when you're filming like this? You are using the camera, uh, the, the, the cell phone camera, as your eyes. It's like it's going as your eyes. But you don't realize that your eyes have the whole world to travel within, right? Your audience only has the world of your frame to travel their eyes within it. And if you are moving like that, you're going to make them sick. Okay. especially like this yeah so it is very important to understand that the camera is not a pair of eyes it's not your eyes right it is a frame that you are creating to allow the audience to allow other people to do what you do with your eyes in the world yeah um so if I want you to get out of here with anything, it's those two things. Landscape, smooth movement, allow your audience to see what's, what is it that you are framing. And for that, you're going to have to choose the frame. You're going to have to choose what you want to film. Um, another mistake that we make a lot is, oh, I want to film her. And then I'm looking over here, oh, but there's so much. Oh, oh, no, I want to look. Like this, this um, insecure kind of searching camera. Um, your camera needs to be, even if you are, like, oh, God, I miss it so much. But you commit yourself. You commit yourself to something. You stay there until you realize, okay, now I can move away. Right? If you decide that that, oh, I don't want to be here. Move quickly, because that's going to be a cut. It's, it's, it's fine. You, you, if, if Dick's doing something here that I don't want to miss, just move quick, uh, quickly, because that will, I will cut that um, um, at some point. Uh, what was I going to say about this? Let me see. Steadily, oh, use your body as a st stabilizer. Your arms. You know, your muscles in your arms, they are stabilizers. Here, if you get tired, this, this stabilizes things. Um, or, or, me, a little tripod. I brought my little tripod. This is a very nice little tripod that you can use to put your camera inside. It is called, what, what's it called? What are you calling it? Archon. It's called Archon. So you push it here, you put your iPhone over there, in there, and there you go. You have a bit of a help steady things. Okay. However, if you do bring a tripod inside um, um, into the picture, um, it changes things. It changes the way in which people look at you and it changes the way in which they react to you. So, oh God, it's okay, this is a little bit more serious. What's going on? What's happening? Right? Um, this is very casual. It's very casual. Casuality, or being casual, casual is not the same thing. Casual, but being casual um, doesn't mean that you can just film anything you want without permission, okay? Um, whatever you film, even if you film without permission, you have to go ask permission afterwards. Yeah. Right, um, I have a little, what time is it? Um, I think I have a little time. I have a little video here of myself um, for the people, oh no, it's not become a video. Interesting. Sorry, um, sorry people in the Zoom. Um, this video, I'm going to make this video available 
And all of the stuff that I'm talking about here, about your body and how to film, etc., that you cannot see too well because I'm small here, um, it's in that video, much clearer, okay? So the little tripod, the little tripod is great for interviews. If you're going to have an interview, you don't want to be holding your camera for maybe, I don't know, half an hour. You're going to get tired. Not your camera, sorry, your cell phone. You're going to get tired. So these are, these are very good. Unless the interviews are very short, like a box ball, etc. You need to know. Maybe you're very strong and don't get tired. You need to know your own limits, right? Light. Turn off the flash. Light in your cell phone. I always have it off. But um, unless you, your intention is to have the flash, unless you are in complete darkness and you want to turn it on because you want to handle some kind of spooky mode, walking around a dark alley somewhere, it's always about your intention, right? Make things intentional and not a mistake. And when you make a mistake, turn it into intention. <laughs> Pretend that it wasn't intention. I didn't say that. Um, so try to control the light in the environment. Um, you can't control too much, right, in terms of, of the outside. But you can control inside a little bit more. Um, for example, I want to have an interview with Dick. And he's sitting down here with this light kind of Dick, you're not a very good example. <laughs> <laughs> you are a beggar. Um, what's your name? Lujain. Huh? So I'm filming Lujain from here, and she has this light coming from above that is making her eyes darker, her nose lighter. That in a in a in a shot is not going to look too good. It's not going to flatten her or anything. Yes, she's not going to look very good. What do I do? Um, if I'm filming here kind of casually again, just filming you guys, everybody as a group, about that, that's okay. But if I really want to ask her a question that is important, that I want, you know, I want to um, um, do a little interview with her, I would ask her to move towards the window, sit here, and I would have the window light behind me in front of her, so the light would be on her face, directed on her face. Or I would turn off that light and try to get the light. I would try to turn that off and try to get the light from here. Um, top light, backlit situations are, are not very um, favorable. On a backlit situation, what happens is you get this, right? You 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 usually get like a shadow of a person. Um, they become dark. And then if you want, you can uh, adjust that because your little cell phones do have an exposure um, thing, um, um, an exposure mo mode. Uh, you can, but then what's going to happen? Um, um, the person will come through because of you know you're going to change the exposure, but the light from the window will wash out, will be bleached, will be overexposed. So all is best. And if people, for example, you're going to do an interview with somebody in their house, and and their favorite chair is against the window towards the television, and they just sit there. What do you do? What do you do? Not rhetorical. And actually, get ask them to move. Yes, <laughs> ask them to move. I mean, the number of students from the Granada Center that don't do that, or because they're afraid, or because they're shy, or because you know this is, the person is used to it and that's the natural environment of their lives, etc. <laughs> <laughs> Your film needs to look good, okay? <laughs> or else nobody's going to watch it. <laughs> so. Right, <laughs> so get the light as as good as you can, and to get the light as good as you can, the trick is behind you, 
from behind you towards the subject matter that you are filming. Okay. Um, if that's not possible at all, then just go with the flow, right? But if you're setting up an interview and you make a mistake on the lights like this, I'm gonna have a word with you. Okay. So whatever you are in the world, the sensors in your cell phones, in your smartphones and iPhones, they they don't do like um, the 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 cameras, the the um, comfort the cameras used to do before. The light doesn't change dramatically, or the zoom doesn't change dramatically. It's very smooth, so you don't really need to worry about exposure um, or controlling exposure at this point. Right? But if you want, there's lots of uh, resources on the internet that you can uh, Google um, that would, would be very helpful. Um, the same thing with focus. It doesn't do that thing that you're filming, I'm filming Emma here and somebody walks behind her and the focus does that. It, it doesn't do that. It, it, it understands that it's Emma who needs to, to be. If that happens, if I am with Emma and uh, my camera decided that's you that I'm filming, then I need to, usually every um, cell phone has a touch focus. Find the touch focus, touch it, and the focus will come back to her, right? It's much easier than uh, on a camera. Right, um, I already mentioned that. I already mentioned that. Read this, please. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Why? Why should you not use the Zoom in your little cell phone camera, even if you have the latest iPhone? Maybe the latest iPhone is better, I don't know. I haven't tried it. Why? Oh. Yes. Why? There are fewer. The pixels, exactly. There are fewer pixels. And why is that that there are fewer pixels? Because it doesn't really zoom optically. It doesn't, it doesn't magnify something optically. Mm -hmm. It just spreads the pixels about to make that image a bit bigger. And you end up with something very fuzzy um, that doesn't match the rest of the quality of your film. Never zoom, ever ever also because if you zoom and you move then it's it's the movement is much more jarring it's horrible it's absolutely horrendous um what do you do oh i need to get her and i'm here and she's doing something very interesting what do you do go there <laughs> move, right you don't you're not a steady thing you know the um <laughs> how do you call this uh, CCTV cameras. <laughs> you are a moving person with your moving camera, mobile camera, a mobile camera that knows what it wants, knows what it's doing, even though you don't know. That's how you need to move your camera, right? So I go there. This is this is a bit a bit an exaggeration, but if I if somebody zoomed into the eye of that little bunny, they would get you know that's what they would get. Uh, sound. I was going to do something before. <clears throat> right, no, I wasn't. Um, be careful. Why? Why be careful with sound? because the sound on our little phones is still, right? It's not directional. It picks up everything, picks up stuff behind, stuff in front, stuff everywhere. <clears throat> it doesn't discriminate. I'm sorry, I need to cough. It doesn't discriminate the sound on your phone. So there are two things that you can do. One thing is that I want to know what you two guys are gossiping about. So I'm going to come very close to you and get my camera near you, my phone near you, because then I can pick up your voice a little bit better. It's the same thing with Zoom. You have to come close, 
with a sound to pick up something. Um, if you are in a very, very noisy environment, what do you do? Not with chloroform. What do you do? You don't interview anyone. <laughs> you don't ask anyone any questions. You just go with the flow. Make the sound into an aspect of that environment, right? Make it into something. Again, it's intentional. It's not a mistake, right? It's a huge mistake if there's somebody in the next room going boom, boom, boom. There's uh, renovations in the next room and I decide to interview Emma here. So no, 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 you can't do that, right? Or if Emma, this, I'm going a bit too, too far now. If Emma is very nervous, sorry. Yeah, but please. And she's going like this. What do I do? I ask Emma. Don't make that, that noise. makes me more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> go somewhere that I can't be out. Yeah. Um, you will be surprised how people are amenable to your uh, requests because they want your work, whatever it is. If they are ready, um, um, agreed in participating and giving an interview, etc., they want it to be good, to be good quality, right? If they show, if you show them something that, if I show Emma later, that yes, I don't know. I think that um, uh, working at Manchester University is absolutely amazing, unless I want to show that is not right, and that, and that is ironic. Right, so you use it intentionally again as a point of irony, but it isn't so, and she'll be very unhappy to see that the shot is ruined because of something that I could have done something to avoid. Yeah, good. Control the environment, control your person, take the person away and go somewhere else with them. Ask people to turn off um, um, air conditionings, ask people to turn off. Um, fans or if they cannot turn off fans because you are in rio in the middle of summer and everybody's hot as hell <laughs> what do you do you film with the fan on but you film the little fan so that your audi audience understands that the noise is coming from the fan then they will forget the noise it's it's so it's as simple as this okay um i already talked about touch focus if you are in a video mode, at least on iPhones, and you touch a screen, it's going to focus on something. Yeah, there's a little square here that you can hardly see, but it's a little square that shows you that you are focusing. Framing. What do you want to include? What do you want to exclude? What relation, relative position and size you give to the elements in your frame? Where's your point of view? Are you going to be on the here because you are like Lorenzo filming his master, um, his guide um, in Africa who was teaching him how to hunt? Lorenzo is my colleague. He was filming him like this because he wanted to give an impression of deference, right? Of respect, etc. cetera. Um, if you want to do the same thing with children and show that children in society have um, a position that you know people usually take for granted, etc. You do that, but if not, you calm down. Um, how much do you want things to fill your screen? Do you want it wide? Do you want it close? What do you want to? How do you want to frame? Right. So very quickly, types of shots. You probably know this already. But it makes um, it makes a difference to have um, a variety of shots in your. I keep forgetting that this is my phone. A variety of shots in your um, basket because it makes you feel a little bit more dynamic. Okay, and it also um, convey certain messages in different ways. So establishing shots very useful. Establishing <laughs> shots you can. Start a little video with establishing shot. Establishing shot shows you where you are, gives your uh, your audience an idea of what we are about to do and where. You know, if it's a it's a house, if it's just like the the, the, the front of a house, your audience is going to think that you're going to enter the house. The house is important. The house has some meaning, some significance. Right, and there are some examples here. 
the Grand Budapest Hotel, the beautiful establishing shot is a moving establishing shot. Things happen um, in that establishing shot, but you have the, the Grand Hotel right there. And this other is um, the Shantytown, the favela, where I do field work in Rio. It's establishing short of the view, and the view has a very particular or many particular meanings when the favela was gentrifying by the time of the, the, the uh, mega event, events and the, the games. Right, long shot or a full shot is a shot that gives you an impression of, you know, a, a, a certain dimension, wider dimension, right? The one at the top is from uh, Lorenzo's film. It's a, it's a full shot of, a, of the body of a person. Right? It can be related to people, full bodies, or it can be related to the landscape, like the, the perspective in the landscape. Medium shots, die, you're not committed, you're not out, you're not in, you, you, from a medium shot, you can come out or you can come in. <laughs> um, it gives a little bit of the background, but it gives the person as well. And then medium to close up, and then very close up. Our dear Michelle, <laughs> and my boy. Um, so very, very close ups. Please don't abuse four thumbs. <laughs> oh, I get so exhausted watching films with extreme close-ups that you almost see only the mouth. <laughs> Why? Why are you doing this to me? Your, your audience, your faithful audience, think about the audience. Don't think about yourself and your beautiful shot of the mouth and it's artistic, blah, blah, blah. No, it has to be effective. Unless you become a, 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 a film director, right? So then you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you get the money to do it. Right? So um, very careful with close-ups because, you know, a close-up in your cell phone um, screen is small. Here is bigger, right? The person is going to be in your face. So what is it that you want to convey? Do you want to convey a kind of emotion, you're doing an interview and they're getting a little bit more emotional, they get into something or secrecy or something and then go, and there's a reason to go inside and get a close-up, right? Not just because. Again, intention, okay? Um, having said that, use it. Experiment with everything and see, and see uh, what works and what doesn't work. Rule of thirds. Does anyone know? What is it? You put the focus into those lines that you the person is on the third. The focus is on the third of the brain. The focus is always on whatever, whoever you want to call it. Yeah. And this however, whoever needs to be distributed within this um um Partition, you, you, you are partitioning your frame in three horizontally and three vertically. I did it the wrong way around, didn't I? See, I'm so dyslexic. Three horizontal, no, I did it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I don't even recognize. Um, why? This is again from Lorenzo's film. Um, it just gives you a sense of space as an audience when you're watching it. Um, this person here, for example, he's he's talking on um, the left hand side, but looking here, slightly here. So Lorenzo has given him enough space to speak, right? And here you can see um, um, out of focus the the environment. His eyes, his eyes are not here. His eyes are not there. It's a close-up. His eyes are at, at, at the bottom of the top horizontal third. What happened if his eyes were down here? What happens? His eyes are down here. His head would come here, and there would be a space up here, and that for some, and he would be kind of cut. Spaces above people's head don't look good. 
they don't look right. They're kind of, I don't know why, but they just don't look right. Um, you kind of cut the person up and I'm in the middle of their body and you don't allow them to inhabit your whole frame, right? It's disproportionate, it's odd, it feels strange. Um, there you go, our dear one. Um, again, she is from the right, speaking to the left. So yeah, her eyes are at the bottom of um, the, the third uh, line above. Um, and there is room for her to speak. Now, if, if this line was, if this, had they done this and, and left room over there, what, what kind of effect would that have? She's speaking outside the frame, right? She's, or she's squeezed. Her words don't have room to live, to, to come out. Um, again, rule of thirds, I can place this person here because I have a conversation going on and there's plenty of room for this conversation to take place, right? Then you can then you can get away with placing somebody very low on your um, um, frame. That's from my film in Vijaga. Um, thank you. Now against the light, but I can get away with it because this is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're talking about what happened to Vijaga has gentrified and has gentrified because it has an amazing view of the city, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And she's pointing that way. And her, her dress and his, his blouse compensate for the darkness of, uh, in, their, in their faces. 